In our last video, we saw how to activate this open Im existing image button to open a gallery view and show us pictures that are on the phone's SD card. In this video, we're going to see what we can do once we have received that image and how we can display that image or do other manipulation with that image. First of all, we've invoked start activity for result. And what that means is we will invoke this activity and get something back from it. We will receive that result in a method called on activity result. So I'll start typing it and we'll allow, we'll let Android Studio autocomplete. Now we're going to get three things in this on activity result. We're going to get a request code and that is this constant that we passed into the start activity for result. That's because we could call multiple activities that return items to us. Every one of those returns is going to come in through this method, so we need a discriminator value, or in other words, a way to determine which activity we're hearing back from. A result code is going to tell us if the activity that we called executed OK, or if the user canceled out of it. And then the intent data is going to be any data that that result returns, which in this case we're going to use. So first things first, I'm going to say if result code, and that sounds a lot like request code, so make sure you're using the right one. If result code equal equal, and then I'll use a constant variable here, OK, which means everything processed successfully, OK. Then I'm going to put a note here, if are here, everything processed successfully. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to say, did we hear from the image gallery? If request code equal equal image, and we'll let that autocomplete, image gallery request. And here I'm going to say, if we are here, we are hearing back from the image gallery. OK, now what do we get from the image gallery? Well, what we're going to get is a URI and this third parameter called data. So what I need to do is I need to say data dot get data. That's just kind of uh, going to return to us a URI. So control alt V in Android Studio will assign this to a variable and I'm going to call this I'm going to call this return uh, image URI. URI means a universal resource indicator, in other words, the address of the image on the SD card. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say input stream image stream, or let's just, yeah, Im Im input stream is fine. Okay. Uh, alt enter which will take care of our import because it's showing up as red because uh, we are it, it doesn't know where to find this so alt enter import and I'm going to say declare a stream to read the image data from the SD card okay now I'm going to do a try catch here. Anytime we're reading a stream of data, there's a chance that it might fail. And we need to think of what we're going to do if it works or if it fails. So I'm going to say, actually, let's let it do the work for us. I'm going to say input stream. And then we're going to say equals get content resolver. Okay, let that auto complete. Open input stream and then we're going to pass in our image URI. So I'll put a comment here that indicates we are getting an input stream based on the URI of the image. Okay. Okay. And what does it not like here? Unhandled exception file not found exception. So I put my cursor on the red line I hold Alt and press Enter, and it gives me an option here, Surround with Try Catch. Try Catches are pr uh, probably one of the most valuable things that we have in making a high-quality application, but they're widely misunderstood. I have a whole series of videos 
on how to handle try catches. But let me just summarize it quickly and say, if we are unable to open this URI and get data out for any reason, if the user happen to remove the SD card, or if we just have an invalid path, it's gonna come down to this exception. And in this case, because we are on the UI layer, it's tempting to raise a toast and say, unable to find this image or something like that. We would put that in the catch block because anything in the catch block is only going to run if there was a problem. So I can say toast, but make text, this comma, to open image. And we don't want it to say too much. We don't want to confuse the user with too much technical information. Uh, we don't want to be distracting. We also don't want to help somebody who's trying to hack into our system. Toast, dot length long, dot show. Okay, so a simple show a message to the user indicating that the image is unavailable. Something like that is fine. Okay, now what do we do with the input stream? Look at where my cursor is right now. If my cursor is after this input streamline, but before the catch, the only way the program is going to get there is if this input streamline executed flawlessly. So anything after this input streamline, but before the catch, it's safe to assume that we got an input stream. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say bitmap factory dot decode stream and pass into it our input stream. And then this is going to return something. We don't know what. That's okay. Control Alt V in Android Studio is going to give us uh, the return type. And you see it's returning to us a bitmap. And so for this bitmap, we can just call it something like image or whatever we want to call it. We could even call it bitmap. So I'll put a comment here. Get a bitmap from the stream. Okay. Okay, now what do we do with the bitmap? Okay. Well, what we need to do is we need to get an instance of, or rather a reference to this image view that's at the top of our screen. So this image view, did we give it an ID? This is our layout that we're looking at. Let's look for an ID here. The ID is image view. Let me change it to IMG plant, or let's just say IMG picture. That's fine. We'll give it a fairly generic name. Okay. I come back to my color capture activity and I'm going to need to get a reference to that image view. The best place to do it where it will be available to any method within this class is in the onCreate. Because in the Android lifecycle, the onCreate gets called as an initialization call when we are creating this activity. So I'm going to say find view by ID r.id.img picture. Find view by ID just says, hey, can you give me a reference to this? R.ID.img picture is a unique key that represents that image view from our view over here. Okay. Now, I want to save this into a field, not a variable, because a field is declared up here within the class but not within a method, and therefore it's available to all methods. So Control-Alt-F will assign this to a field. And I'm going to name it uh, IMG Picture. Give it the same name as what we have placed on the XML layout. Go ahead and choose Enter. And we see that it finishes off that line. Now, one trick, though, is that this is actually an image view, not just a generic view. So I'm going to change the type to image view. And then it's probably going to get confused. And it's going to say, I don't know what an image view is. Alt-Enter will allow us to fix that by importing image view. But now we have a problem down on our assignment line. The find view by ID is returning any widget from the screen. It doesn't know we specifically want to return an image view widget. So here I will Alt-Enter and I will add a cast. And the cast says, hey, I know that what I'm getting is an image view. I would like to access all of the methods that are specific to an image view, as well as all the general methods that are specific or that are general across all widgets. Okay. Get, whoops, get a reference. 
to the image view that holds the image that the user will see. Okay, now I have enough to come back down and in my try block, I'm gonna say IMG picture. And then I'm going to say set image bitmap and you see how convenient that is. And then we simply pass in image. And I'll put a comment here that says show the image to the user and save. Now one more thing I need to do before I run. We are accessing the user's SD card and we need to request permission to do that. Think about when you download an Android app and usually it gives you a list of permissions that it is requesting. That list of permissions comes here from the Android manifest and we have to say up front these are the things that I need to do to operate. These are the permissions that I require. So to read the SD card, we're going to need to say uh, uses permission, and then we're going to say uh, Android name, and we're going to say Android permission dot read underscore external storage, just like so. And then we're going to close this tag and save. Now, let's take a look and see what happens when we run this. I go to the search by color screen, I choose open existing image, and as we would expect, uh, it brings up the image gallery. I select an image, and with not a whole lot on the screen, it kind of does give it a funny layout, which we can fix, but that's a separate issue. Nonetheless, here you see, here's the image that we selected. If you're happy with that, we're all done. If you would like to see it under the covers, uh, what I like to do is snap a breakpoint, so let me run this again with a breakpoint intact. And I'm running it in debug mode now. I'm going to say open existing image, and we see what's going to happen is it goes to the on image gallery clicked method. And I can choose F8 to step through each of these as we find the picture directory, and I can mouse over, and I can see the value of that picture directory. I just have to do a little uh, click the plus here and expand it. It will give me a little bit more information. Uh, I'll go ahead and fast forward beyond that. Uh, it's going to find the full path. It's going to get a URI, which represents the entire path down to that image. Here, right here again, here's the URI. And you see storage SD card pictures. That is the public directory where pictures are stored. Now we're saying, OK, action pick. I want to pick an image. I want to get it from this directory, the one I just showed you, and I want to get any type of image media, but specifically image media. I choose F8 again, step over each line, and finally I can say, okay, I'm all done with this method. I'm going to choose F9 and quickly toggle back over, and what you'll see is that this is going to invoke the image gallery. Now, we're in the image gallery, which is a library we're using from Android or an external application. I select an image and what we're going to see then is that the debugger starts again, but this time it starts in on activity result. And so we see is result code equal to result OK? Well, th these are both numbers under the covers and the value of the number is irrelevant, but the fact that the number behind result code is the same number that's behind result OK, that's all we need to know. It happens to be negative one, but don't really think of it as a number, think of it as this constant here. Request code. The request code is the same number that we passed up when we called start activity for result. It was the number 20, which was just a number I picked as unique fingerprint of the image gallery, a number that I chose. It could be any number, as long as it's something unique from any other activity that we're calling. Those two are equal, so I press F8, and we see what we're going to do now is we're going to get a URI of the image that the user selected. And then we're going to take that URI. We're going to open an input stream. We're going to take that stream. We're going to pass it to the bitmap factory. It's going to read the bytes in from that stream and convert them to a bitmap. And then finally, it is going to show that bitmap on our application in F9 to finish. And we come back. And what we should see after we walk through that is here is the image that we selected. So in this video, we've seen how to receive an image from the image gallery. This is the second part of a two-part series. 
in invoking the image gallery with an implicit intent. I hope this was helpful. If so, please like, subscribe, and leave your comments. Thank you.